I'm going to give a demonstration of how to compose inside GarageBand using the Smart Instruments feature. I'm going to create a new uh, session or a new song inside GarageBand. I'm going to start off with a Smart Guitar. Now it boots up like this and we can see all the, the chords here in the key of C major and the strings. That works really well. Or we can put on this autoplay feature and hear some nice chords like that. Now we're in the key of C major, so it's given us the chords of C major. We've got chord 1, C major, of course. We have chord 4 and chord 5, which is G. In addition to those three primary chords, we also have the minor chords of chord 3, E minor. We've got A minor, chord two, which is chord 6. So we have chord 2, D minor, and also the very common flat 7. B flat, and it could be good for our bridges. The B diminished, um, I wouldn't worry about that. It doesn't get used very often in a lot of pop songs. If we want to change the key, we can. We can just click on a little uh, um, spanner at the top there, and we can see we can change the key to whatever key we want. We're going to stay in C major for now. Okay, so when I do use this with students, I encourage them just to start experimenting and playing around with the different chords here to see what they like. Um, I like it that GarageBand lays out eight bars across the top of the screen because that's usually a common uh, number of bars for them to be composing in as beginner composers. So um, let's just demonstrate how it works. I'm going to push record and uh, that will give me a four beat click, a count in, and we'll record um, what could be eight bars maybe of a verse in our pop song. And here we go, we've recorded eight bars in. We can look at, see what this looks like with MIDI by clicking at the top here. And we can see it all there. We can even edit the MIDI uh, inside GarageBand in the iPad if we're not too happy with it. We can double tap it and click on edit. And we can see all the MIDI notes there that we can um, click and drag around, sorry, touch and drag around. I'm not gonna do that for now. We can see that we've got our, our recording here. I can go and add some keyboards to it as well. And I might just do that now. I'm gonna create another smart instrument. Click on Instruments, let's do a smart keyboard. Let's see what we have here in terms of our autoplay options. That'll do. So let's give this a go. Let's go from the beginning and play in the same progression. And if we go uh, and have a look at now our sequencer, we can see we've got two instruments playing there. Now, if some of the MIDI hasn't gone in quite right, because I may not have touched them at the uh, at exactly the right correct time, so the chords change on the bar, uh, we can edit inside GarageBand on the iPad, or maybe we may want to chuck it into GarageBand on the uh, on your laptop, on your computer, um, where it can be a lot easier to edit all the information, and of course, it might be easier for you to work with if you're recording audio along with it as well. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to export this project over to GarageBand on my laptop. So I'm going to click on my songs. It's going to save what we've got here. I'm going to select this first song and I'm going to send it off to my computer. And I'm going to use AirDrop. Here we go. Now, if we look over on my laptop, we can see that this has now appeared inside GarageBand on my, uh, on my laptop computer. So I can click on it, boot it up, give it a name, save it to somewhere easy for me to find later on. Let's just do my desktop for now and click on save. And here we have the whole project inside GarageBand on my laptop now. everything we want to edit it, um, record along and do other things. Now of course we don't only have to open it inside GarageBand on a laptop, if you have got um, get a Logic Pro on your computer you are also able to take the project, I'm just going to move it to my desktop for now, right click it, I'm going to open this with Logic Pro. 
And we can see the song that we started off using, uh, creating on the iPad with the GarageBand app is now inside the fully uh, functional, fully professional recording environment of Logic Pro. <laughs> what students can do. They can build up projects bit by bit, um, verses by verses or choruses by choruses, just by creating chord progressions like this using the smart instrument feature inside GarageBand on the iPad. And then they can bring them inside Logic or GarageBand and uh, they can just do whatever they like with them. They can drag them around, and double click them, they can edit the MIDI, they can change the key, they can split up the regions and just grab the chords and move the chords around and they can restructure it. They can add other instruments such as if we uh, go and create maybe a drummer track and now in addition to our keyboard and our acoustic guitar we now have drums as well so this works really really well um, I encourage you to play around with this with your students and use it as a real good compositional tool just to um, illustrate how maybe how Roman numerals works in, within key structures and also encourage them to create a whole lot of different types of verses and choruses uh, in given keys or, or keys that they choose themselves. I hope you found this um, helpful. Uh, the best thing you can do now is just open up a GarageBand in your iPad and experiment and uh, create some cool progressions that you may be able to use in a pop song.